Hi there, it's Ross here. So, last week's audio blog or podcast was quite spontaneous. There was a moment last Saturday when I thought I couldn't possibly record without a professional microphone, and perhaps I should wait and consult experts in the field, or even spend hours trawling different sites on the internet, getting bogged down in multiple reviews and recommendations. But last weekend I went ahead anyway, knowing that I was ready knowing that I wanted to try sharing some behavioural science I use in organisations and to share it in a different way. Since then, it's been interesting for me to observe some of the content my mind has produced. And here's just a, a selection of some of the thoughts that have popped up for me over the last few days. People have said they liked it, but what do they really think? Maybe one episode is enough. Maybe I'll just let the blog slide again or or just go back to a written blog. If I do a second recording, that's creating a rhythm or an expectation, which I'll not be able to sustain, so I'll ultimately fail. What should the next topic be? I can't decide. People will think I'm a bit of a knob. I need to have a brand identity or mission for the blog. That's difficult, probably beyond my capability, to be honest. And that's just a selection of some of the thoughts that were popping up for me over the last few days. By the way, on that last point, I think I do have the theme of this blog. It's the world of work and my experience of it as a psychologist, but primarily my experience of it as a human being. I'm really interested in the impact that our thoughts can have on our behaviour. For instance, the title of this podcast. Can I have a word, please? When these words are directed at me in the workplace, they set my heart racing and my stomach churning every time. As I walk into a room with the person who's asked for the word, my catastrophizing mind has already created the conviction that I'm about to be dismissed which makes it really difficult to to focus on the actual topic of the conversation. In nigh on 30 years in the workplace, I've never been dismissed after these words have been uttered. But I've always been the guilty boy ever since school. Picture the scenario in the classroom where the teacher says, no one's leaving this room until someone owns up about this thing that's happened. I would be always sitting there radiating this intense heat from my beetroot-like face, looking ever so guilty. But it was never me, because to be honest, I was a bit of a goody two-shoes at school. So one metaphor we use in training to illustrate the influence that our thoughts can have on us is called the passengers on the bus, and I'm going to try and present it to you now. So the idea is that I am the driver of my bus of life and I determine where it goes and hopefully I can steer it in a direction that has meaning and purpose for me. And the moment I turn on the ignition and start moving, there's lots of chatter starts up behind me. And that chatter, we say that chatter is like our thoughts. And some of that chatter from my passengers is saying, hey, Ross, We love being on your bus. We think you're a great driver. And they're clever, these passengers. They know what I'm thinking. So they say, hmm, I can see you're thinking of turning right down this new avenue in your life. Well, go for it. We think you're a great driver. We think you've got all the skills you need to make this work. And we think it'll go really well and end up in a really, really great, positive place. So don't hesitate. Go for it. Indicate now. Some others are a bit less enthusiastic. They're saying to me, Ross, these seats are really uncomfortable on your bus. And to top that, we can see you're thinking of turning right down this new avenue in your life. And really? Because what we really like is we really like going on that circular route around the city, round and round. That's where we feel really safe and really comfortable. And we know that if you're honest with yourself, that's where you feel really safe and comfortable too. So so don't don't bother turning right. Just keep going round and round. That's fine. And then some are just downright rude. They say to me, Ross, 
We think you're a really shit driver. Do you even have a license for this vehicle? And we can see you're thinking of turning right too. And, and really? Honestly? Are you sure? Because what we, we know will happen is that there will be a series of unfortunate events ending in utter, utter catastrophe and desolation. So really, really urge you not to turn right. And perhaps, to be honest, maybe we should perhaps even just stop the bus. I'm not sure it's wise to continue moving. And that's the metaphor. That's, that's it, passengers on the bus, in brief. And I suggest that's what it's, what it's like being a human. That, that's the human condition. And one of the first steps in, in thinking how we can change our relationship with these thoughts is, is by becoming aware of our passengers, aware of these thoughts. And in doing this, we can begin to recognize them for what they are. Just thoughts. And it can also help us to consider what's important for us in any given situation. For example, in sharing this blog, I'm trying a new way to reach more people with behavioral science that, that I've found can have quite a profound impact in, in life at work, both my own and in people I work with and train. So I'd invite you to, to pause and have a think about your own passengers or thoughts. What do they say that gets in the way of you living the life you'd like to live? What sort of influence are they having on you? And can, and can you just notice them for the, for the thoughts they are? That's all for now. So thanks, thanks very much for listening. And please try again next week because I believe there'll be another recording for you then. Cheers.